The SpaceX CEO has a long-standing vision of establishing a city on the Red Planet. It would be self-sustaining, would be home to a million people, and would transform humanity into a multi-planet species. Uh, why make life multi-planetary? Um, and I, I think this is just an incredibly important thing for the future of life itself. There's always some chance that something could go wrong on Earth. Uh, the dinosaurs are not around anymore. Uh but he's facing a big problem that going to Mars will take you five months at the shortest, which to Musk is just too long. That's the reason he's always finding a better way to cut the trip to 100 days or even less. This kind of rocket absolutely thrills scientists' minds, so how does the approach function and what exactly is it? Let's expose everything about Elon Musk's insane nuclear starship in today's episode of Alpha Tech Channel. If you're planning a trip to Mars, you better start with how you'll cover the vast space between Earth and the Red Planet. Mars is the fourth planet from the Sun and the second closest to Earth, but it's definitely farther than you can imagine. In theory, the closest that Earth and Mars would approach each and Earth is at its farthest, and that would put the planets at 54.6 million kilometers apart. Sadly, this has never happened in recorded history. The two planets are farthest apart when they're both at their farthest from the Sun, on opposite sides of the star. At this point, they are 400 million kilometers apart. In general, the average distance between Earth and Mars is 225 million kilometers, and it would take you about nine months to reach the red planet. What's really scary is the more time you spend in transit, the higher the chance of something going wrong. Space may look like a vast and empty void, but the cosmos teems with invisible high-energy radiation, particles traveling near light speed that can pummel human travelers and the surfaces of worlds like tiny bullets. The whole Mars journey would expose astronauts to about a million millisieverts, which means the first Martian explorers could get roughly eight times the amount of radiation per year of radiation that workers annually get an exposure limit to. In total, the space traveler would get about one-third of the way towards hitting a NASA astronaut's maximum lifetime exposure limit, which is 25 to 3250. The only way to reduce radiation exposure is to simply get where you're going quicker. So to get to the scale intended by Musk, faster transportation is a necessity. Musk has indicated in the past that he's considering different options for powering spacecraft. For instance, he's tweeted about how nuclear-powered rockets would be a great area of research for NASA. He has good reasons for this, because nuclear systems are faster. But why exactly is a nuclear-powered starship faster? So far, the most common propulsion systems used are chemical propulsion and solar-powered electric propulsion systems. Let's see, chemical propulsion systems provide a lot of thrust, but chemical rockets aren't particularly efficient, and rocket fuel isn't that energy dense. The Saturn V rocket that took astronauts to the moon produced 35 million newtons of force at liftoff and carried 950,000 gallons of fuel. While most of the fuel was used in getting the rocket to orbit, the limitations are apparent. It takes a lot of heavy fuel to get anywhere. Electric propulsion systems generate thrust using electricity produced from solar panels. These devices can have more than five times higher mass efficiency than chemical systems, but they produce much less thrust, about three newtons. The energy source, the sun, is essentially infinite but becomes less useful the farther away from the sun the ship gets. One of the reasons nuclear-powered rockets are promising is because they offer incredible energy density. The uranium fuel used in nuclear reactors has an energy density that's 4 million times higher than hydrazine, a typical chemical rocket propellant. It's much easier to get a small amount of uranium to space than hundreds of thousands of gallons of fuel. Now, there is an important point that you're definitely wondering. Is a nuclear-powered starship safe? Honestly, many people's idea of anything nuclear is a disaster waiting to happen or harmful radiation that could make humans die. Let's look at the safety of the rider and the Starship first. The risk of radiation would be mitigated through the rocket's design of liquid propellants. The Starship will still carry propellant for backup stored between the engine and crew area, blocking out radioactive particles and acting as a good radiation shield. Apart from that, the distance between the crew and the reactor also provides a buffer as the design would place the living quarters at the other end of the rocket from the reactor. So what about the safety of the people outside the Starship? 
Musk has already thought of that, and in another tweet, he said the nuclear reactor on board will only kick in when it clears the Earth's orbit. This shows Musk is proceeding with lots of caution. It also means that Starship will be launched by the Super Heavy powered by chemical propellants, but the nuclear reactor will fire up after the two stages separate. Once in orbit, the reactor can do little harm as blast and thermal radiation cannot move through a vacuum. If disaster struck and the rocket's reactor broke up in pieces, it wouldn't even land on Earth or any other planet for tens of thousands of years. By that time, the radioactive substance would have naturally decayed to the point where it wasn't hazardous any longer. So a nuclear-powered starship is safe for everybody. After all, let's talk about the configuration of the nuclear system inside the starship. Musk could use two main types of nuclear systems for Starship. The first would be nuclear thermal propulsion. These systems are very powerful and moderately efficient. They use a small nuclear fission reactor, similar to what you'd find in a nuclear submarine, to heat gas such as hydrogen, and that gas is then accelerated through the rocket nozzle to make thrust. Engineers from NASA estimate a mission to Mars powered by a nuclear thermal propulsion unit would be 20 to 25 percent shorter than a trip on a chemical-powered rocket. Nuclear thermal propulsion systems are more than twice as efficient as chemical propulsion systems, meaning they generate twice as much thrust using the same amount of propellant mass. So they can deliver 100,000 newtons of thrust. That's enough to get a car from zero to 60 in about a fourth of a second. The second nuclear-based rocket system is called nuclear electric propulsion. No nuclear electric systems have been built yet, but the idea is to use a high-power fission reactor to generate electricity that would then power an electrical propulsion system like a Hall thruster. This would be very efficient, about three times better than the nuclear thermal propulsion system. Since the reactor could create a lot of power, many individual electric thrusters could be operated simultaneously to generate a good amount of thrust. Nuclear electric systems would be the best choice for extremely long-range missions because they don't require solar energy. They have very high efficiency and can give relatively high thrust, but there's still a lot of technical problems to solve before they're put into use. The current type of starship still needs to fly to orbit and prove its ability as a premise for a future powerful Martian rocket. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. And don't forget, share your ideas right there in the comment section. Your support is motivation for us to make more quality content. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.